so we have everything prepared for setting up the motherboard. I like to do this outside of the case. It's just much, much, much easier, um, especially when you're working with an unfamiliar cooler. I don't think this one is too hard, actually. I don't think there's any backing plates or anything involved, so we'll take a look at that. But before we get into any of that stuff, I'm just going to unbox the motherboard here on camera just to show you what you get with this board because it's great value for the money. So, first of all you get the manual and everything. Here's the sticker that you can put on your case. Very nice, I'll pop that up there safe. I might, I might put the stickers on, I'm not sure. Here we have all the documentation with the manual. This is probably um, one of the only manuals if you're like me that you'll ever read but it's essential to gain information on uh, the headers and stuff. Um, here we have uh, some cabling. This is an ID connection. Don't know why they still include it but I guess it's nice. And here you have two SATA connections, um, two SATA cables, sorry. One is straight and one is right angle which is really cool. I'll use the right angle one for my optical drive. I only need two in this build so um, it's great that they provide that. Here is the motherboard backing shield, nicely labelled. Wish it was black, but you can't have everything. And then we lift up this flap. You can pretty much see. Here is the motherboard. So, the best motherboard workstation, if you're on a budget, is definitely the motherboard box. If we just make sure there's no dust on that at all and then we take the motherboard out the anti-static wrapping touch some in metal just in case I'm a bit paranoid make sure I'm nicely grounded I'm not on carpet or anything daft like that let's open up the anti-static bag and take out the motherboard now one thing I noticed straight away about this board, because it's ultra durable 3, it is very heavy. Now I do see some people uh, placing the motherboard on the anti-static bag on the box. Um, this is a no-no for me. Maybe it's good to keep static away, I don't know. But the anti-static bag is extremely slippery. And when you're putting pressure into things like the RAM slots to install the RAM, then you know you could have a bit of a slippage. So that's no good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just grab the camera and just take you on a very quick tour of the motherboard, showing you things like the ports and whatnot. Okay, so here is the board. As you can see, it supports only one graphics card, which is, uh, of course, perfectly suited for my setup. So here is a PCI Express um, X16 slot. Here we have a load of normal PCI Express slots and some average PCI slots. Um, there you can see the audio header back there, the green one, that's exactly what I was talking about. And there is the 8 pin. It's a shame it's not at the top, that's why I've got the extenders for these. Um, I wish the audio was down the bottom with all the other headers, but that's okay. I'm going to try and extend up and go into the retention plate. Um, the retention plate hole in the case. So let's just have a look at the ports then. Here you can see you have your audio. Uh, 7.1 surround sound maybe, gigabit ethernet, 2468 USB 2.0 ports, you have uh, two firewire ports, uh, optical audio, uh, digital audio in uh, both coaxial form and toss link, and your PS2 keyboard and mouse. Here's your AM3 socket, looking good. Four RAM slots, everything's pretty average. You can see you've got your six SATA slots down there. It's a nice board, nice quality as you can see, um, nothing too flashy but definitely very cool. So what I'm going to do now is unbox the processor and we're going to pop the processor into the board. So here is the processor, as I said the seal is broken um, on many of the things that I'm going to be showing for the simple fact that I had to see if everything was A-OK -okay, um, and I didn't have to return anything. So here you can see this plastic piece here. Here's the processor and here is the sticker for the case. We'll keep that sticker safe with the Gigabyte sticker. That's the processor, we'll be attending to that in a minute. I think I might as well show you the stock cooler. Um, here you have what looks like the instruction booklet. Here is the stock Phenom cooler. I believe it's a little bit more fancy than the, um, than the Athlon ones and whatnot, or maybe I'm wrong. don't think the other ones have these um, 
copper pipes and everything. So there's the standard heat sink, it's not too bad. I would imagine that it's quite loud. Also you can see it's very little. It's got some nice um, contact area with some copper pipes there and everything. It doesn't look too bad, but I think the um, aftermarket cooler that I have bought should be a little better than that. So I thought I'd just show you the cooler anyway, just in case some of you wanted to know. So, let's install the chip into the board. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. So, this is probably uh, the process where you've got to be the most careful when building your computer. Let's get this little guy out of here. Now, this for lots of people other than the video card maybe will be the most expensive part and the most important part. There you can see all these pins. Hopefully you can see anyway. I'm not going to get up now and change the camera angle while holding the CPU. I'm a little bit shaky. I don't know why I get shaky sometimes, but I'm okay. You can see the pins on AMD CPUs are actually on the CPU themselves. Um, and they match up with holes in the socket. So, first things first is to unlock the socket by pulling up that little arm. And then you look for the uh, little gold triangle there. Match it up with the little triangle on the socket and zero insertion force, just drop it straight into the socket. Make sure it's in there. Do not push down on the CPU. Apply a bit of pressure and your CPU is locked into place. So your CPU is now installed on your motherboard and that is going nowhere. Keep this safe, you will need this for upgrading your CPU in the future if you want to sell your old one. Definitely very important. So let's take a look at the frame. You should have been able to see quite a bit of that with a bit of luck. So now we're going to uh, install the RAM. A slightly less scary process, here's my RAM. And we'll just open it up. Now of course this board supports dual channel memory. And I'm not going to read the manual right now, so we'll just hazard a guess that it's the blue slot. So like I said, this is 4 gigabytes of DDR3, 1333 megahertz. One in. I should imagine it's the blue slot. It tends to go colour coordinated anyway, so I can always check in the manual afterwards. There you go, the RAM is in successfully. You can see that is four gigabytes populating that board now. So, let's get some of this stuff out of the way. And let's unbox the cooler, because we need to uh, put the cooler on the CPU again. Another thing that I like to do outside of the case. Let's just change that angle slightly. There we go. I like to do this outside of the case for a few reasons. Number one, it's a bit hard to do it um, inside the case because you've got to reach down past everything else. And number two, um, you can easily maneuver the motherboard by holding the heat sink, which is really nice. Okay, so there's our pre applied thermal paste, um, Arctic thermal, whatever it's called. I don't have a clue what thermal paste it is but hopefully it'll be good. Um, here we have instructions, which I will actually probably read because I don't know how to install this. And here's all the stuff. I believe this is the Intel bag with these sort of push pin things here. Uh, we need the AMD bag. I thought for a second it wasn't there then. Here it is, the AMD bag. So I'm going to pause the camera now and figure out how this cooler goes on. Talk about finally. <sighs> that looked like probably the simplest thing in the world. Basically you get these two clips you've got to put on either side of the socket. Two screws, you just screw the cooler into it. Um, it's just so, so hard to just get your fingers in there and do it right. Ugh, that was tricky. Anyway. Let's pop the, uh, what does the fan go? If I put the fan on upside down, does that matter? Because then the cable comes out slightly neater.
Ah, uh, right, it hooks onto the top of the cooler as well. I see, I see, I see. And onto the bottom. Ah, so you can't slide it up and down wherever you like then. There we go. The fan is on. And the cooler is on and definitely not going anywhere. Here is the cable for it. Oh dear me, that was tricky. So that is the motherboard all prepared and ready to go into the case. Um, just to recap over what we've done then, we've installed the CPU, we've installed the RAM, as you can see over here, and installed the cooler. Now then, the cooler wouldn't have been half as hard to install if they would have just um, supplied some longer screws. So it was a bit of a pain, but nothing too major. As you can see, I've plugged the CPU fan in. It comes with a nice sleeved cable. So anyway, that's it for part two. Um, be sure to join me in part three, where we're going to pop this guy into the case and probably unbox the power supply.